viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on computation of personal income tax. Computation of personal income tax. In this presentation, I will examine the following. Number one, meaning of personal income tax. Income tax. Then classification of income. Classification of income chargeable to tax under personal income tax. I will also examine the benefits. Benefits in kinds or tangible benefits. Then I also examine the tax exempt deduction. Tax exempt deductions in personal income tax. I will also examine the calculation of consolidated relief allowance. Calculation of consolidated relief allowance, and I will also provide the tax rate. Then, work examples will also be provided. If you are just coming across this YouTube channel for the first time, or if you have not subscribed in the past, please click the red subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell icon so that. You don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. So, personal income tax. This presentation is in accordance with Finance Act requirement 2019, 2020, and 2021. So, the studying of personal income tax will generally cover the taxation of employees. Personal income tax covers taxation of employees, taxation of sole trader, taxation of sole traders, partnership assessment, assessment, then estate settlement, and trust. So, these are the areas covered under this topic. So, personal income tax chargeable to tax or personal income. Personal income chargeable to tax to tax will be divided into two. We have earned income and uh, on earned income. Personal income tax chargeable to tax will be divided into earned income and on earned income. Earned income are the income generated from the exertion of physical energy. Income generated from the exertion of physical effort is said to be the earned income. Earned income includes income from trade. Income from trade or business. Income from trade or business, this is accessible on preceding year basis. Preceding year basis is used for income from trade or business. To learn more about this, we'll go and watch my presentation on adjusted profit or company income tax.
So, income from previous employment. Income from previous employment in form of pension or gratuity. These are earned income. Then we also have income from employment. Employment income. Employment income to consider will be divided into two, into two. The wages and salaries of basic pay and uh, taxable benefits. Taxable benefits benefits. Employment income that will be categorized as the first order earned income. I said it will be divided into two. We have the wages and salaries or basic pay plus taxable benefits. The taxable benefits are called benefits in kinds. Benefits in kinds. What do we mean by benefits in kinds? Benefits in kinds are the expenses, expenses incurred by the employers. Expenses incurred by the employer in provision of benefits to employees. Benefits in kinds are the expenses incurred by the employers in provisions of benefits to employees. Benefits in kinds include the following. Benefits in kinds include number one, residential accommodation. Benefits in kinds include residential, residential accommodation. Sometimes employers might provide an accommodation to the employees. The value of the benefits in this case will be the rateable value of the accommodation. The rateable value of the accommodation is the value of the benefits. The value of the benefit, benefits, that is, where the employers provide accommodation to the employees. The value of the benefits is the is the rateable, rateable value of the accommodation. Number two, domestic staff paid by the employers. Domestic, domestic, domestic staff. Paid by the employers. Sometimes the employers may provide the employees some staff to assist them in their domestic activity. The value of that benefit that are taxable is the salary of the staff. Salary of the staff number three the use the use of assets acquired by the employer the use of assets acquired by the employers where the employer acquired an asset 
for the use of the employees. The value of the benefit in respect of that asset that are taxable in the hands of the employee is 5% of the cost of the asset. And where the cost of the asset is not known, then 5% of the market value of the asset should be used. Number four, we have the asset rented by the employer for the benefit of the employee. Assets rented by the employers for the benefit of the employees. Where the employer rented an asset for the use of the employees, the value of that benefit that is taxable in the hands of the employees is the annual rental charge on the asset. Annual rental charge on the asset is taxable in the hands of the employees. Number two category of income which I'm going to examine is on earned income. On earned income. On earned income. On earned income. Are income other than and income. Income other than and income are said to be on and income. On and income are the income generated from investing the and income. When and income are invested, the income generated from those investments falls under unearned income. Examples of unearned income are renter income. Renter income. Renter incomes. Then we also have dividends. Dividends. We have interest. Interest. We also have Royalty, royalty. Then we have earnings, earnings from uh, from trademark, earnings from trademark or patent, etc. All these fall within the category of earned income. Income from Plowing back the earned income are said to be an unearned income. Basis of assessment. Basis of assessment of personal income. Income from trade. Income from trade or business is accessible on preceding year basis. Preceding year basis, PYB. Employment income. And uh, other taxable benefits are accessible on actual year basis. Why on earned income? On earned income are accessible on preceding year basis as well. So, 
please take note of this. I want to consider the tax exempt deductions. Tax exempt deductions. Tax exempt deductions. Those deductions that are exempt from tax. Number one is National Housing Fund Contribution. National Housing Fund Contribution. National Housing Fund Contribution. The National Housing Fund Act, LFN 2004, LFN 2004, Law Federation of Nigeria 2004, provide that a Nigerian earning an income of 3,000 Naira and above per month in either private or public shall contribute the sum of 2.5% of his monthly salary to the funds. Anybody in Nigeria who is either working in private or public that is earning an income of 3,000 Naira or above per month shall contribute the sum of 2.5% of his monthly salary to the funds. That is National Housing Funds contribution. Number two, life insurance premium. Life insurance premium. The amount that are exempted from tax is the annual amount of premium paid. Annual amount of premium paid. Number three, National Pension Scheme. National Pension Scheme. National Pension Scheme. The amount that is exempted from tax in respect of National Pension Scheme is 8% of employees' monthly emolument. 8% tax exempt tax exempt deductions in respect of national pension scheme is 8% of employees monthly emolument emolument Monthly emolument comprises monthly emolument comprises number one, we have the basic salary, number two, housing allowance. Number three, we have transport. Transport allowance. All these together are regarded as monthly emolument. Number four, gratuity. Gratuity. Gratuity is the money paid to the employees. Usually a lump sum, a lump sum, that is a lump sum paid to employees who is retiring after several years of service. Is the money paid in form of a lump sum of money, that is gratuitous, a lump sum of money paid to employees 
who is retiring after several years of service. Employees graduating with EFE from 2004 is tax deductible. Gratuity is tax deductible. Gratuity is tax deductible. Number five, national health insurance scheme. National Health Insurance Scheme. This scheme was set up with the aim of providing quality health services to the people. The scheme was set up, that is National Health Insurance Scheme was set up with the aim of providing quality health services to the people. It required the employers who have at least 10 employees. Employers who have at least at least 10 employees to pay contribution under the scheme together with the employees. That is both the employers and the employees are required to pay contribution under National Health Insurance Scheme. In public sector, that is federal level, at the federal level, that is in public sector, employers, employers will pay 3.25%. Why employees are to pay 1.75%, which amounts to 5% of the employees' emolument. Then, in private sector and other tiers of government, private sectors and other Tiers of government. Employers are to pay 10%, while employees will pay 5%, which altogether amounted to 15%. These are the tax exempt deductions under the scheme, that is, under Personal Income Tax Act. Now, I want to examine the Consolidated Relief Allowance. Consolidated. Relief Allowance Consolidated Relief Allowance is granted to the employees and the allowance granted is the higher of 200,000 Naira or 1% of gross income. Consolidated relief allowance, you take the higher of these two. Higher of 200,000 Naira or 1% of gross income. If 1% of gross income is 180,000, that means 200,000 will be chosen. And if 1% of gross income is 250,000, therefore 250,000 Naira will be chosen. You choose the higher of the two. Plus 
of gross income. That is the consolidated relief allowance that is available to the individual taxpayers in any year of assessment. I therefore want to consider the format for the computation of personal income tax payable. Let assume the name of the taxpayer. If it's Alex, you have at Alex computation of personal income tax payable for let's assume the year of assessment is 22x 22x year of assessment I've told you that the year of assessment must be mentioned. Examiner may ask you to compute the personal income tax payable for the relevant year of assessment. If you put computation of personal income tax payable for the relevant year of assessment, examiner is going to score you zero. No marks, with, no mark will be awarded for failing to mention the year of assessment. The year of assessment must be mentioned. You know, the individual income, that is the personal income of an individual, is accessible on an actual year basis. So I have told you previously that the income of an individual chargeable to tax, I said it will be categorized into two. We have earned income and unearned income. I've told you that an income, we can have income from trade. Income from trade or business. Remember, I've told you that this is accessible on preceding year basis. Preceding year basis. That means the income for 2022 will be assessed in 2023. Income for 2023 will be assessed in 2024 year of assessment. So this one is PYB, preceding year basis. PYB. Then we have gratuity. Gratuity to be assessed. Then we have employment income. Employment income. After that, this is assessed on actual year basis actual year basis. Income of that year will be assessed in that year. Employment income includes the basic pay, that is the basic salary, plus the allowances, housing allowance, motor vehicle allowance, dependent relative, uh, sorry, housing allowance, transport allowances. There is no dependent relative allowance. So, though those benefits in kinds we form part of the employment income. Benefits in kind, accommodation, rateable value of the accommodation. Then we are the employer enjoys the personal cars from the employer. Five percent of the value of the asset. Any asset, it may not be car. So whatever asset enjoyed by the employee, five percent of the cost of the asset, or five percent of the market value of the asset where the cost of the asset cannot be ascertained. So all the benefits in kinds, tangible benefits, they will fall under this. Then, after all these have been considered, then you sum it up. You sum them up to get the total of the earned income. After earned income has been considered, we have on earned um, and income. I've told you that when you plow back your earned income into other profitable investment, or when you invest the earned income, the profit that fetch you is what what we fall under this category. So we have rental rental income, and this must be reported gross. 
you may be given net in your quest on how to gross it up. So by the time we are taking the work example, you will understand what I mean by gross. Dividend. Dividends, it have to dividend income, you ought to, it have to be reported gross. You have to gross it. And the unearned income, I've told you that all the unearned income is preceding year basis. PYB. Then interest income. Interest income. You have to gross it. You have to gross it. It has to be reported gross. Royalty. Royalty income or receipt. A royalty income. You have to gross it. Other earned income. Every other earned income will fall under this category. You have to gross them. You now add this to get the total. From this, you now less non taxable income. Less non taxable income. For most of the earned income here, the amount that is taxable is the, uh, the withholding tax that have been deducted. That means you will still need to deduct them here. So you deduct non taxable income. You have this as the total. You now less tax exempt items. Among the tax exempt items I mentioned include the National House Fund contribution. National, National Housing Funds Contribution Then Life, uh, life Insurance Premium Life Insurance Premium I categorize this into five Gratuity you know that since gratuity have been treated as earned income here. It has been treated as earned income. So it will also be deducted. We also have national pension fund contribution. All this has been explained. Have been explained. All this have been explained. Then I also made mention of uh, National Health Insurance Scheme. National, National Health Insurance Scheme. So, these are the five items I've mentioned. The total of these will be deducted and when you deduct them you arrive at the gross income you arrive at the gross income so gross income after all those tax exempt items have been considered yes the consolidated relief allowance i've told you how this can be calculated i've explained how this should be calculated so when you less that you get the chargeable income on this chargeable income, you now apply the graduated tax K on it to get the tax payable. This is the tax scale. Income, personal income tax rate, income to be taxed, and the rate of tax.
the first thing hundred thousand is taxed at seven percent. The next thing hundred thousand will be taxed at eleven percent. The next five hundred thousand will be taxed at fifteen percent. The next five hundred thousand will be taxed at nineteen percent. Next one point six million will be taxed at twenty one percent, and anything above three point two million will be taxed at twenty four percent. This is the task rate and the task table. Now, I therefore want to consider, uh, I therefore want to take a work example. Example, Mr. Yaya Ogusowo, an employee of Cool Beauty Product Limited, has the following salary package for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Salary, 6.5 million naira per annum. Enjoy the service of two domestic servants and night guard fully paid for by the company as follows. Two domestic servants, 200,000 Naira each. Night guard of 150,000 Naira. Lived in a company house rented for 450,000 Naira per annum. Used an official car purchased at a cost of 3.4 million naira by the company. Further information about him. Married with two children of school age. Has an aged mother who he maintained with 30,800 naira per annum. Paid the sum of 48,000 naira as life assurance premium. Four. The rateable value of his residence is 250,000 naira. Dividend received net of withholding tax from shares in the Blue Ship Company paid 5 7 2019, 99,000 naira. Paid as of December 31st, 2019, of 63,000. That is the dividend received. Paid 30 June 2020, 90,000. Paid 30 June, uh, December, 31st December 2020, 95,000. You are required to compete with tax payable for the relevant tax years. That, that is the question. Now, the solution. The first thing is to identify the name of the entity. The name of, I mean, the name of the person, Mr. Yaya Ogusowo is the employees. You put Mr. Yaya Ogun Sowo Computation of Personal Income Tax Payable If you look at the question, the question says compute is tax payable for the relevant tax year. If you put computation of personal income tax payable for the relevant tax year, you are going to score zero. Examiner may not give you the tax year or year of assessment. And you will be expected to decide that. Meaning that if you fail to put the year of assessment in your solution, then no marks will be awarded to you. No mark will be awarded to you. Now, I've told you that it is wrong to put for the relevant tax year or for the relevant year of assessment. It is wrong to put that. So, you have to look for the year of assessment. Remember, I've told you that the employment income is accessible on actual year basis. Now, let's look at the year. Back to the question has the following salary package for the year ended December 31st, 2020. So, since the salary of the employee will be assessed on actual year basis, therefore, the year of assessment will be 2020. For 2020, year of assessment. If you don't want to put year of assessment, 
you can put tax here. Remember, I told you that the income of an individual that are accessible to tax, I said that will be categorized into earned income. So you'll be starting with earned income. And income. The earned income include the salary, the salary of the employee. And the employee salaries include uh, amounted to 6.5 million naira. You put 6.5 million naira. Back to the question. Aside the salary, he enjoyed the service of two domestic servants and that guard fully paid for by the company as follows. I've told you that we have benefits in kind. Now, the employee enjoyed the services of the domestic servants and night guard. The domestic servant, two domestic servants, and each receives 200,000. That is benefits. Now, benefits in kind. Benefits in kind. Or taxable benefits. We have domestic servant, domestic servant. Each receives the sum of 200,000 naira. And there are two domestic servants that were given to him. So that amounted to 400,000 naira. He also has a night guard. And the night guard received the sum of 150,000 naira. So you put that, 150. That is only one person. So who receives the sum of 150,000 naira? Now, lived in a company house rented for 450,000 naira per annum. He enjoyed an accommodation which was rented for 450,000 naira per annum. But in the note 4, you were told that the rentable value of his residence is 250,000 naira. Since the rentable value is 250,000, therefore, 250,000 will be considered as taxable benefits in the hands of the employees, not 450,000. So, we have accommodation. Two fifty thousand being the rateable value of the premises he enjoyed. After accommodation, used an official car purchased at a cost of three point four million naira by the company. He also enjoyed an official car. So, motor vehicles. It was purchased for 3.4 million. I've told you that where an asset is acquired by the employers for the benefits of the employees, that the taxable benefits in hand in respect of that asset enjoyed by the employee will be 5% of the cost of the asset. Where the cost of the asset is no. And where the cost is not no, then we use 5% of the market value of the asset. Therefore, we have 3.4 million, 5% of 3.4 million. That gives us 170,000. So, further information about him. Married with two children of school age. Now, the era or the tax regime currently in use is the consolidated relief allowance. So there is no children allowance. Children allowance is no longer granted to employees. Therefore, this information about children is irrelevant. Has an aged mother who he maintained with 30,000 per annum. We don't need the amount he spent on maintaining his aged mother. And besides, no dependent relative allowance is granted in the current tax regime. Therefore, 
the information about the agent money that he maintained is relevant. Pay the sum of 48,000 Naira as life assurance premium. This will be titled as exempt deductions. So it will be considered later. The rateable value of his resident, this has been considered. Dividend received, this is an earned income. Now, what is the sum of the taxable benefits in kind in the hands of the employees? 400,000 plus 150,000 plus 250,000 plus 170,000. So that is total 970,000. 970,000. If you add the 970,000 to 6.5 million, and that is total 7 million for 70,000. That is the total earned income. After earned income, we have on earned income. On and income. I've given you some examples of our earned income to include the dividend, rental income, interest received, royalties, etc. You were given dividend receipt, net or withholding tax. That means withholding her tax has been deducted at the source. Tax deductible at the source. That is withholding tax. Withholding tax is the tax deductible at the source. And withholding tax is usually deducted from those income known as the frank investment income. So, withholding tax rate is currently 10%. 10% have been deducted from the dividend. That means the amount paid in respect of those dividends is equivalent of 90%. If 10% withholding tax has been deducted from 100%, then the net amount paid is equivalent to 90%. Now, back to the question. Now, the amount paid as at 5th of July 2019 amounted to 99000 and the amount paid as of December 31st, 2019, amounted to 63,000. Now, remember, I've told you since withholding tax has been deducted, that means the amount paid is equivalent to 90%. 30th of June 2020, 90,000 was paid. And as of 31st of December 2020, 95,000 was paid. Remember the tax year or the year of assessment of Mr. Ayaya Ogunsowo is 2020, year of assessment. And the frank investment income is accessible on preceding year basis. Since it is accessible on preceding year basis. That means the dividend paid in 2019 is what will be assessed in 2020 year of assessment. And how much was paid in 2019? Now we have 2019. So 99,000 and 99,000. And uh, 63,000. It's 162,000. That is the total. Of the 162,000, I mean, I mean, the 162,000 that was paid in 2019, which will now be assessed in 2020, is equivalent of 90%. Since withholding tax of 10% has been deducted. Therefore, you have to gross it. Dividend. Received of 162,000. If you cross it now, divided by 0.9, 90%. If you convert it to decimal, is 0.9. No, 90%. 90 divided by 100, that is 0.9. The total amount received is equivalent to 90%. The total is 162,000. So, if you have 162,000 divided by 0 0.9, therefore the dividend gross, the gross amount is 180,000. 
180,000. 180,000. So, by the time you add the 180,000 to 7 million, 470,000. Then you have 7 million, 650,000. Now, the dividend since withholding tax has been deducted. The current tax regime requires that the withholding tax should be the final tax that will be deducted on that income, on, on dividend, or on, on an income. Since withholding tax has been deducted, that should be regarded as the final tax that will be deducted. Therefore, we are going to subtract the 180,000. So now, you now less dividend. The reason for deducting the dividend because it has been tasked. So, and that withholding task will be regarded as the final task on the dividend. So if you subtract the 180,000, then you'll be left with 7 million. For seventy thousand. After this, you now consider the tax exempt deductions or items. I may mention of five different items under this heading in my previous explanation. I may mention of national housing funds contribution, national health insurance scheme. Then, life assurance premium. I equally may mention of the gratuity and as well as national pension scheme. Those are the five items I mentioned that will fall under the tax exempt items. Now, let's go through the question to see if you have any of them. Now, number one, we have paid the sum of 48000 as life assurance premium. So we have life assurance premium of 48,000 that should be deducted. So if you now deduct the 48,000 from 7 million for 70,000, then you have 7 million for 22,000. This is a gross income. Gross income. From the gross income, you now deduct the consolidated relief allowance. You deduct the consolidated relief allowance. I'm telling you that consolidated relief allowance is you consider higher of 200,000 naira. So you consider higher of what? 200,000 naira? Or 1% of gross income. 1% of gross income. Our gross income is 7 million four twenty two thousand naira. 7 million four two two thousand. If you calculate 1% of this, you have 74,000. 74,220. 74. 1,220. And the higher of the two is 200,000. Therefore, that means 200,000 will be considered. Consolidated relief allowance now. Consolidated relief allowance now. You consider the 200,000. If you consider the 200,000 plus 
20% of gross income. And the gross income amounted to 7 million for 22,000. So you now calculate 20% of that, 7 million for 22,000. So, 7 million for 22,000, the 20% of that. That gives us 1 million for 84. 484,400. If you add 200,000 to it, it will be 1,684,400. <laughs> so, this will be considered as the consolidated relief allowance. 1,684,400. That is our consolidated relief allowance. You now subtract the consolidated relief allowance from the gross income of 7 million for 22,000. Then you'll be left with 5 million. 7 million for 22,000 minus 1 million 684. 1,400. Then you are left with 5,737,600. That is the chargeable income. On this chargeable income, you now apply the tax rate to compute the amount of tax payable. To compute the tax payable now, you now apply the tax rate. Now, let's have tax payable. Remember, we have first, first 300,000 Naira. And that is taxable at 7 cover or 7%, whichever one you use. Either you, you either call it cover or you call it percent. 300,000. What is 7% of 300,000? That gives us 21,000. Then we also have the next 300,000. Next 300,000 Naira at 11%. If you calculate 11% of 300,000, that gives us 33,000 Naira. Then we also have next 500,000 at 15%. At 15% of 500,000 that gives us 75,000 the income we have considered so far if you sum it up 300,000 plus 300,000 that is 600,000 600,000 plus 500,000 that amounted to 1.1 million and our taxable income we want to our income dischargeable income is 5 million 737,600. That means we've not reached this. This is your target. Then after next 500,000, you can still consider the next 500,000 as well. At 20, at 19%. At 19%. What is 19% of 500,000? That gives us 95 thousand if you consider the income you have considered so far this plus this is one million 1.6 million and our target is five million seven thirty seven thousand six hundred so next 1.6 million and that is taxable at 21 percent so you use your tax table 
21% of 1.6 million. That gives us 336,000. The income we have tasked so far, let con let's see if it has been exhausted or to know if any amount is still left on task. 300 plus 300, that is 600. 1.1, 1.6, 3.2. And our total chargeable income is 5,737,600. And what has been tasked so far is 3.2 million. Now, if you subtract the 3.2 million from the chargeable income of 5 million, 737,600. 5 million, 737,600. Minus the total we have considered so far, which is 3.2 million. If you add this up, it will be 3.2 million. Minus 3.2 million. Then you are left with 2,537,600. We now have anything above 3.2 million. Above, above now, 3.2 million. No, what have been considered is 3.2 million so far. So anything above that now will now be tasked at 24%. So now we are left with 2,537,600. Six hundred, and that will be tasked at twenty-four percent. Twenty-four percent of two million five thirty-seven thousand six hundred gives us six zero nine thousand and twenty-four. If you add this, it gives you the total tax payable. If you also add the total income that have been tasked so far, it will give you. 5,737,600, which is our chargeable income. The total of this is 5,737,600. Now, how much is the total tax payable? Let's sum up this. 609,024 plus 336,000 plus 95,000. 95,000 plus 75,000 plus 33,000 plus 21,000. That gives us 1,169,000. 1 that is the total task payable by Mr. Jaya Ogun Sowo. This is the end of my presentation on this topic. Watch out for the next lecture or next video on taxation. Easy come.